story a few years ago. I was in Dallas, um, and I was at the airport, and about every 10 minutes, a message came on over the PA, which said, if you happen to see a member of our armed forces in the airport, please congratulate them and thank them uh, for their service to our country, to our great country, actually, not just our country. And this happened about every 10 minutes, and I, I had a long time to wait for the plane, so I started to get pretty sick of this. Um, and I thought, how weird that a country prioritizes those people above all others. Why, why weren't they saying, if you see a teacher here, mm. why, why don't you go and thank them for educating our children? Or if you see a doctor here or a nurse here, why don't you say thank you for looking after us? But no, it was members of the armed forces. And it gave me a different insight into America and into a, a, a country that is now completely centered around violence, actually. Um, you know, the thing that happened last night in Florida is, is the street level manifestation of that. When, when a society really regards violence as its primary governmental objective, you know, when you have libertarian governments that say the, our only job is actually to defend the realm, that's what we do. We don't do social welfare, we don't do anything like that. We simply stop violence by the threat of other violence because that's what soldiers are, actually, you know, the threat of violence. And if that is your primary resource, the thing you resort to first, rather than, say, compromise or cooperation or negotiation, or all the other ways that people could solve problems, then you do end up with a, a slightly um, bent society. Um, America, of course, as you know, has the biggest military in the world, and in fact, about half of all the military, all the weapons in the world are in America, um, as are a quarter of all the prisoners, by the way. Um, they're in American prisons. Uh, and those things are not unrelated, I think. Um, the idea in America of having a, a vast, huge military is not really um, just ideological. It comes from a system that promotes lobbying, that, gives industry so much power in government. But of course the result is that that famous proverb, to a man with a hammer, everything is a nail, starts to come true. If, if you have a huge military, you naturally think, this is how we will solve our problems. We've got the biggest army in the world. Surely all problems will be solvable by using that big army. Um, that's one problem with having an army. It gives you the wrong tool to deal with problems with. The, the second difficulty is that a large military is, is a huge displacement of resources, technical resources, intellectual resources, human resources. Suddenly a huge body of intelligence and resource and power that could be used for doing good things is used for doing either nothing or bad things. Uh, most of the time nothing. Um, I don't know if you realize that since the Second World War there have been nearly 700 different species of fighter jet formed, uh, built. And of those, I think something like 20 have actually been used in any kind of military engagement at all. So most military spending produces stuff that is never used for anything. Most military spending is part of a cycle of keeping military spending going. Now, of course, if you, if you build a huge military, the message that you're giving to the rest of the world is, this is how we solve problems. And of course, the rest of the world then says, well, we've got to have a huge military as well. That's the language that's being used. So this whole spiral of overproduction of um, useless materials is, is um, what we're trapped in there. Just tell me the time, will you? I don't know. Okay.